Greetings and welcome to my tiny retro mini plug and play console museum where I revisit my youthful dreams about how one day games would all have photorealistic graphics by going back and playing games made of chunky bright colored pixels. SEGA TOYS has released more information about the Astro City Mini Arcade Cabinet that's going to be released in Japan on December 17th of this year. As you already know, the Astro City Mini is a tiny replica of a Japanese candy cabinet that is famous all throughout the great nation of Japan. And no, it's not literally made out of candy. Candy cabinet is just what cool gamer geeks like me like to call it. Because we have to have special little magic words for everything. This isn't Sody Pop, it's Gamer Fuel, yeah! This ain't a controller, it's a burrito breaker! This ain't a game, it's a ham and cheese sandwich! The purpose behind these candy cabinets was their versatility. They were made so that games could easily be switched out for the newest releases, greatly reducing the cost to arcade owners looking to keep their offerings up to date. So when Virtual Fighter 2 comes out, instead of having to get all new cabinets with their own monitors and controls, I can simply swap out Virtual Fighter 1 for the new game. Or I could just swap out every game in my arcade for Dynamite Ducks, because that's the best arcade game of all time. You got them rocket launchers, and you punch everything. Now that's an arcade game. Speaking of Dynamite Ducks, Sega Toys announced 13 more games that are going to be included on the Astro City Mini. And you know what? They still haven't announced Dynamite Ducks. But don't worry, Sega fans, because we created a formal petition at change.org in order to ensure its inclusion. In fact, we already have three signatories, including ourselves. I'm sure Sega will notice this and give in to our demands. Notice me, senpai! Notice me! But if you want to help add some momentum to our movement, I'll add the link to the petition in the description of this video. Together, our voice will be heard, and we'll get that sweet Dynamite Ducks action. The kind that helps ensure that YouTube never mistakes our channel for content that's safe for children. In our last video about this subject, link also in the description, I made 20 predictions for games I thought would be included. Well, how'd I do? Of the 13 games announced, I successfully predicted 8, and there are no surprises here. For me, the only real surprise was Puzzle in Action Ichidan R, since I didn't realize there was actually more than one Puzzle in Action game. Because I mean, why would there be? Bonanza Brothers was, I thought, a given because of the inclusion of Puzzle in Action, which makes extensive use of that game's characters. Columns, on the other hand, was mostly a surprise, since Sega Toys has already included Columns too, and so that seems a bit redundant. I predicted Cotton Fantastic Night Dreams, which a lot of people are really stoked about. This is an arcade side-scrolling shooter published by Sega that involves a little witch girl who is somewhat reminiscent of Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service, at least superficially. It was ported to the PC Engine CD where it remains a very popular game for that console. And there were a lot of sequels, some of which are currently big time collector's items. A 1994 sequel released for the Mega Drive can go for a thousand bucks. Cotton 2 for the Sega Saturn can be around $500. So being able to play the original here is a really neat feature of this mini console. I also predicted both Crackdown and Gain Ground, both of which were more or less hidden gems in their day, but they've now been re-released numerous times thanks to various Genesis collections, remasters, and mini consoles that have been circulating for the last 10 years or so. It was actually because of the tendency to include both of these games in these kinds of collections that I just assumed the arcade versions would make the cut. And here they are. Poyo Poyo is also pretty much on everything these days. And since Sega owns the rights, and since they're lazy as hell, I assumed it would be on here too. And here it is. It's Poyo Poyo. It's pretty good. This guy likes it. I also guaranteed that you'd see both Shinobi and Shadow Dancer, because how could you not? 
That wouldn't even be moral. And so, here they are. Both games, which is awesome. Shinobi was only recently released for the Sega Ages line on the Switch, so it'll be interesting to see how it compares. I actually considered adding the Wonder Boy games that were published by Sega to my original predictions, but I decided against it for the sake of brevity. But that was a goof, because here are all three Wonder Boy games developed for the arcade as Sega publications. Wonder Boy is essentially the same game as Adventure Island if you're familiar with the Hudson Soft line of games that were popular on the NES. Wonder Boy in Monster Land was also a launch title for the PC Engine, only it was completely reworked as a licensed game for the Bakuraman animated series and its eponymous snack products. Both of these games were also mainstays of the Sega Master System. Wonder Boy 3 Monster Lair might cause some confusion. This is not the same game as the very popular Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Curse or The Dragon's Trap, but rather it is Wonder Boy 3 Monster Lair, a side-scrolling platformer shoot-em-up hybrid that plays a lot like Chelnov. Yeah, remember Chelnov, the weird Data East side-scrolling run-and-gun where you play as a radioactive Russian man that can't stop moving for some reason? It inspired an entire generation of iPhone games. Monster Lair was not really that well regarded, but it was a launch title for the TurboGrafx CD, which means that almost no one has heard of or played this game in North America, because, you know, no one bought a Turbo CD. Still, it's pretty cool though, especially if you love Chelnov. And who doesn't love Chelnov? Especially the Sega Genesis version, with this kick-ass soundtrack. In fact, screw Monster Lair, I want the Astro City Mini to have Chelnov. In addition to unveiling more games, Sega Toys has also announced a quirky accessory that's quite a bit different from the sort of thing that they normally do. It's a set of plastic attachments that makes the Astro City Mini look even more like an authentic candy cabinet from a Japanese game center. For just 3,980 yen, or like 38 bucks, you get a little stool for mice to sit on, a plastic signboard, and a little plastic base that makes the console a full-sized miniature representation. It's even going to have a coin slot that lets you use it as a piggy bank. And once again, this is $38. If you spend $38 on this, then you probably aren't that interested in a piggy bank. You got them financial problems. Financial problems. Ha <laughs> ha! How naive I was. Little did I know. Sega Toys was going to release the complete game list right in the middle of the production of this video, completely ruining the whole thing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with some good news and some bad news. The good news is that Sega Toys has released the complete list of games for the Astro City Mini, and once again, I predicted a lot of these. So hooray for me! Going in alphabetical order with the first game I successfully predicted is Alex Kidd and the Lost Stars, which is a fun, quirky action platformer that wasn't really that well known in the US. I think most of us remember this game for the Master System port, which is frequently reviled because of the awful sound effects in that game. Well, the arcade game is a lot better, with beautiful Sega System 16 graphics and two-player simultaneous co-op action. You're definitely going to want to get a second controller for this one. Another strange game I predicted is a beat-em-up called Arabian Fight, which was made for the Sega System 32 arcade board by AM2. This is a strange game, and I've never seen this game anywhere in the wild outside of emulation, so this is a pretty cool addition. The crappy thing about this game, however, is the fact that it's a four-player co-op game, and I am still under the impression that the Astro City Mini can't handle four-player gameplay. A game I didn't predict, but really should have, was the early Sega arcade hit Flicky. Flicky is actually a really important part of Sega's arcade game legacy, and it has been ported to and referenced by many different Sega products over the years. The gameplay is simple and fun. Just gather up all the little birds and don't get eaten by the cat. It's like some sort of profound metaphor for life itself. A game I would have never expected on here is a game that we knew as My Hero. 
I remember this game as a difficult, wonky Master System game that was also completely evil. It's evil because it has no ending. Rather, it just keeps looping through, over and over and over. It also plays this one song, which is kinda cute at first, but eventually it starts to make you go crazy. I really didn't need this one. Then there's going to be Poyo Poyo 2. They already announced Poyo Poyo, but just in case you wanted more Poyo Poyo, here it is. It's more Poyo Poyo. It's Poyo Poyo 2. Gesundheit. A game I predicted and I'm super happy to see is Quartet 2. Quartet 2 is not the sequel to Quartet, but is actually an alternative two-player version of the original. I guess the reason for this is that the four-player Quartet arcade cabinet was very wide and so Sega wanted to offer arcade operators a more compact version of the same game. So the 2 in the name refers to the fact that this game is the 2 player version, even though it's still Quartet. Okay, I'm pretty shocked that they included freaking Radmobile. If you recall, I was adamant that the Astro City Mini wouldn't include any games that had special cabinets with steering wheels or pedals or anything like that. Because after all, they're supposedly aiming at authenticity with this thing. Well, Radmobile destroys that hypothesis. I really don't know much about this game other than the fact that Brendan Fraser absolutely seems to love it. It seems like a pretty nifty game. Too bad I don't have a steering wheel. I guaranteed Scramble Spirits since it was a common candy cabinet game in Japan. And here it is. I don't have much to say about this game. It's a pretty decent shooter. The more the merrier. It's Scramble Spirits. I didn't predict Sega Ninja, or Ninja Princess as it's also known, but I really should have. This game is really old and really hard, but it's also fantastic. If you've ever played the Ninja on the Master System, which is one of the best games for that platform, then you'll immediately understand this game. They are roughly the same game, though as you can see, the original protagonist was a female ninja. This game is awesome. Another game is a shooter called Sonic Boom. I didn't predict this one. I honestly didn't even realize this game existed until now. It seems to have a pretty cool soundtrack though. I love shooters, so I'd probably really enjoy this one. Okay, and they included Space Harrier. Even though Space Harrier was played using a special joystick. I really don't know why this game was included. But it is Space Harrier, and for some reason Sega loves releasing Space Harrier every two minutes. So here it is. Again. It's freaking Space Harrier. And... what the heck is Stack Columns? Well, it's another Columns game. Okay. I guess you can't blame Sega Toys for wanting to be thorough. They're offering you no less than three ways to play Columns. And two ways to play Poyo Poyo. That's probably way too many though. And finally they're gonna have Thunder Force AC, which is the arcade version of Thunder Force 3 for the Sega Genesis, which is a game that was just released by M2 for the Switch as part of the now defunct Sega Ages line. And, of course, Thunder Force 3 also just made an appearance on the miniature Sega Genesis Classic. I can't really blame them for triple dipping though, because this is one of the best shooters ever made for the Genesis. In fact, this might actually be the best shooter ever made for the Genesis. Maybe. The soundtrack is just absolutely legendary. And there you have it. All 36 games for the Sega Astro City Mini are now known and they're out there. Though I still think there might be a few bonus games. Maybe. Maybe just maybe. The real shocker here, however, is the lack of all of the prominent fighting games that people were really wanting. There's no Virtual Fighter 2, no Fighting Vipers, no Sonic the Fighters, no Last Bronx, there's just nothing. Why did they bother giving us all these freaking buttons? How many of these games require six buttons? And now they also reveal that they're going to include a massive arcade style joystick peripheral? But what for? The only game that absolutely needs a giant six button controller is Virtual Fighter. So 
Not having any other fighting games other than Virtual Fighter is kind of a deal breaker for me here, guys. But do you know what's a million times worse? Not having freaking Dynamite Ducks. Are you freaking kidding me? We signed a petition for this very reason. We wanted to get Dynamite Ducks on the Sega Astro City Mini. Sega, did you check your email? The Astro City Mini absolutely must have Dynamite Ducks. But as it turns out, disappointing game list aside, we still need to think really long and hard about the people who are actually producing this thing. Because this is not being developed by M2. This is not even being developed by Sega. This is being developed by Sega Toys, and we really need to talk about that. If you look at the Sega Toys track record, you'll find that a retro video game console such as this is completely unprecedented for them. They sell a lot of electronic gadgets and gizmos for kids, but they aren't really much of a software company at all. In fact, they're barely even much of a toy company. Yet Sega Toys does have a rich legacy rooted in the Japanese love for miniature replicas. The original name of the company was Yonezawa, and it was once a significant fixture of Japan's unique post-war economy, where in exchange for vital resources like Elvis Presley, American Jeans and the Pompadour, the nation exported massive amounts of cheap consumer goods, quality electronics, affordable cars, tentacle porn, and of course, toys. Indeed, in the 1950s and 60s, long before the advent of the Sony Walkman or the NES or the eclipse of the American auto industry by companies like Honda and Toyota, Japan was most famous in the West for their tin-plated and die-cast metal toys. They were also famous for Pearl Harbor, and my grandfather never really forgave them for that. Of the successful Japanese toy companies, Yonezawa in particular was known for a line of high-quality die-cast metal replicas of vehicles that they called Diapet. Diapet is a term that Yonezawa created to describe these beautiful little models because the word pet is being used here to mean something like cute or kawaii. But the term Diapet to me sounds like a name for diarrhea medication. In fact, it turns out Diapet is a name for diarrhea medication by Soho Global Health. Diapet is an anti-diarrheal medicine from natural ingredients to reduce diarrhea, solidify liquid feces, and relieve nausea from diarrhea. To this very day, Diapet remains both a popular line of die-cast metal toys for collectors of miniatures, as well as a safe and effective way to solidify your liquid feces. Diapet. It's just a terrible name. Yonezawa was acquired by Sega in 1991 and became Sega Yonezawa. Afterward, they specialized more in low-end electronic products aimed at smaller children, like the Sega Pico, a baby toy that some game historians like to count as a kind of lost Sega game console. It really isn't. Not unless you think the 2-in-1 Leapfrog Touch is a video game console. Could you even imagine the console war between these? In 1998, Sega Yonezawa was officially renamed to just Sega Toys, dropping the Yonezawa branding completely. As a part of Sega, Sega Toys was acquired by the Sega Sammy Corporation during the takeover period of Sega that occurred between 2003 and 2004. Today, Sega Toys persists as a semi-autonomous subsidiary of Sega Sammy, and it has little to do with the Sega Games Corporation itself. Like, I don't even know if these guys talk to each other. Moshi moshi, shitsure shimasu. Kore wa Sega Toys shacho no spooking desu. Yakyo no shiai no shitai sa renakata. Donata, Sega Toys desu. Sega Toys? Hiki watase. Hello. I am sorry, you have a wrong number. This American babies are us. We want to buy one million Sega Pico. Please send to babies are us right away. Thank you. Bye. Ho 
Unlike most Sega Sammy subsidiary brands, such as the Sega Games brand, Sega Toys' business offices are not even physically located at Sega Sammy's new corporate building in the Shinagawa section of Tokyo, an area that's home to various Japanese corporations like Isuzu, Nippon Light Metal, and the Namco Bandai building. Instead, Sega Toys is located on the other side of Tokyo in an area called Asakusabashi, a commercial district that's mostly known for the production and sale of traditional Japanese dolls. Sega Toys has their own president too, an affable looking man by the name of Atiko Sasaki. Sega Toys may not be well known internationally, but they are one of the largest toy companies in Japan and by a fairly wide margin. And they have sold a lot of very successful products over the last 20 years, some of which you may be very familiar with. I pointed out once that they're known for a nifty toy planetarium called the Homestar, which was first produced in 2005, but they were also the Japanese distributor of the popular Bakugan series of toys made by Spin Master. In 2010 they were the Japanese distributor of the Zuzu Pet, something that I distinctly remember buying for my own children. This Juju or Zuzu pet, Mr. Squiggles, may contain higher than allowed levels of the metal antimony, which could cause health problems. You just really shouldn't suck on this, I think. That is the, is the general advice for all the toys. Don't put them in your mouths. All right, Kelly, thank you so much. <laughs> but, as you can plainly tell by now, Sega Toys just doesn't have much of a history with full-blown video games or emulation. In fact, Sega Toys in recent years doesn't have much experience actually making toys. That's right, so even though they're a big player in the Japanese toy world, and even though they've sold some very successful and high profile toys over the last 20 years, Sega Toys is mainly a distribution company. They didn't actually make Bakugan or Zuzu Pets, rather they helped the western makers of those products get their toys into Japan's crazy retail industry. You see, giant retailers like Target and Walmart have never really taken off in Japan. Rather, most retailers remain small and local, serving an average of 100 customers in a tiny 1,000 square foot space. This means getting products to all these smaller retailers is a massive logistical industry unto itself, and that's essentially what Sega Toys mostly does. They make sure other people's products get sold to Japanese regional wholesalers, who then get those toys into Japan's million or so smallish retail stores that are scattered everywhere. But is there any evidence that a toy distribution company can successfully handle a project like the Astro City Mini? What will the quality of emulation be like? If pieces of crap like the at game Sega Genesis have taught me anything, it's that the people put in charge of emulation really matter. Bad emulation would make this product nothing more than a really cute, geeky paperweight. You know, like the Neo Geo Mini. Sega Toys, however, as far as I can tell, does seem to actually make some stuff. And the stuff they actually make does tend to be toward the true video game side of things. Another more recent example is this Detective Conan tablet computer for kids. But as you can see just by looking at this, this is some very basic leapfrog level stuff here. Could the developers of this pull off the quality emulation required to make the Astro City Mini work? And does anyone else find it really odd that M2 is not doing the emulation for Sega this time? Was the Sega Genesis Classic, which M2 worked on, not a hit? I know the emulation on that wasn't perfect, but it was more than good enough to be worth the purchase, in my opinion. Also, Sega just announced the shutdown of the Sega Ages brand that M2 was producing for the Switch. Is Sega cutting ties with M2 altogether? It's too early to say, but this whole affair is obviously a big experiment on the part of Sega. Guys, I'm not sure I want to pay $121 plus $30 to get a second controller for an experiment. I think I'm sitting this one out. I am definitely not going to pre-order an Astro City Mini. Sega Toys is a successful toy distributor, but they are not a video game developer, and I have no reason to think that they're going to nail the part that actually matters, the emulation quality of the games. Instead, I'm waiting for reviews and positive word of mouth first. Does that mean there's a good chance I'll miss out on this product altogether? Sure! But I'd rather risk that than be out more than $150 
for a crappy product made by the development team behind this. This, this, this baby toy. And I definitely don't want to pay an additional $40 to turn the Astro City Mini into a glorified piggy bank with a tiny unusable bar stool. Nope, I'm sitting this one out. Unless, unless, of course, you all are actually interested in forcing me to find out whether or not this is any good. You know, for the greater good. Because let me tell you guys, it's getting really hard convincing my wife that I actually need another one of these retro mini consoles. So, what if you guys were to be like, hey, CCP, can you please pre-order one of these Astro City Minis and review it so that we don't like, you know, waste our money and stuff? Then I could be like, ah, oh, baby, you know I gotta order me one of these Astro City Minis with the tiny little bar stool and all that. Cause you know, our viewers, they need to know, baby. And then she'd be like, for the viewers? And I'd be like, yeah, baby, it's for the good of society and all that. So what do you guys say? Should I pre-order the Astro City Mini? Are you interested in learning more about it and getting some kind of first-hand review? Or are you guys like me? And do you think this thing is probably going to be a dud? Let us know in the comments. And one more time, just before we go, I'd just like to thank the three people who did sign the petition to help us get Sega to do the right thing and put Dynamite Ducks on the Astro City Mini. With your support, I know we can get Sega to do the right thing. Or else. Or else. I'm just not gonna buy it. Unless. Unless, of course, you make me. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a blessed day, and goodbye.